Welcome to the uh, 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, broadcasting live from Los Angeles. And uh, today's topic is, um, since last week we talked about silence, um, and this week we're going to talk about the I thought, because people went been asking me questions uh, that when I talk about this I and where is the source of our suffering, which is the source of our identification. And people are asking me, what is this? What are you referring to? What do you mean by this I? So I'm going to get into that today. And, um, and that's going to clear a lot of things. And I'm going to give you how you can work with it and give you a practice that if you work and do it diligently, what's going to happen is every time you use it, you're going to realize that your mind becomes absolutely quiet. So we're going to get into that later. For the moment, let's just take our attention inwards and um, simply by diverting your attention from the other world, you're diverting your attention inwards. And what you're doing is, as you, be, as you close your eyes and you relax and you're looking inside, you trace back your thoughts to their origin. You're tracing back your attention you're putting your attention towards where thoughts arise. Where do they come from? Who are you before you're thinking? If you weren't thinking, if there is no thoughts in your mind, then who are you? How would you define yourself if you have no thoughts? Because you have to have thoughts which comes from your memory, that you're referring to who you are using those thoughts. Now, if you don't have those thoughts, then who are you? So, you're diverting your attention inwards. You're tracing your thoughts to the source of it. Source. And then when you get to the source of the thoughts and you pay attention, where they come from, then there is nothing. Everything becomes absolutely quiet. It's super, super simple. All you have to do is pay attention. It doesn't require any kind of uh, jumping jacks or any kind of uh, special breathing techniques or doing any ma mantras. You simply close your eyes and you look at the source of yourself, where the witness is, where the watcher exists. We can use a metaphor that there is a big lake and comes from this lake, thoughts arise from this lake. But when you go to the lake and you jump into it, it's absolutely silent. There's no thoughts. So let's do that. Bring your attention to the source of your thoughts. Take a deep breath and just relax into your natural state of being. Relax into this moment. You don't need to fight your mind to quiet down. If you have a 
the stream of thoughts that they keep arising in your mind without fighting it simply bring your attention to the source of it and everything just folds back into this like a Pandora box everything goes back in there and there's nothing it all becomes quiet Simply enjoy your natural state. Your very birthright is peace, balance. It's a blissful state, maybe very subtle. but there's no story going on. You're quiet. You're hanging out by yourself. And you're not entertaining your mind with a story. It's the story that goes in your head that creates all kinds of suffering. There's always a story, a story going on.
my story. Yeah, welcome to your natural state. Simply being here, but not being engaged with anything in particular. You are aware, but you're not identified with anything. Pure awareness. You're simply aware. but not focused on anything. Unless something comes and grabs your attention, demands your attention, but right now in your meditation, you're just present, you're here, You've gone beyond your mind into silence. And you're in a very relaxed, meditative state. Completely disconnected from the story of the world or the story of my life.
Just be patient. Let meditation come to you. Don't force anything. If you bring your attention towards the source of your thoughts, automatically your mind becomes quiet because you bypass the mind. Slowly, slowly come back. Now slowly you're diverting your attention from the inner world to the other world. Slowly, slowly, you're coming back here. When you uh, meditate on a regular basis, whenever you get a chance, and you've learned how to discover the inner peace, how to go back into this place that uh, you're familiar with. And as your attention diverts 
within. Um, so what happens is you begin to establish this uh, state of silence within yourself. And the more you tab into it, uh, what happens is the more you discover that this is your natural state. And this brings peace, joy, bliss, balance, and you get to know it very well. So you're able to go there and come back and interact with what is going on in the world. So whether you're a family man, you have kids, you have um, um, a lot of responsibilities, you have to work with a lot of people, you're on the phone a lot, whatever it is, or your life is stressful, what happens is when you get established in this state of silence and you discover it, it leaks into your daily life. So when you come from this place into the so-called the world or the chaos, then you're coming to it from a state of balance. And you're not, you're able to stay still. You don't get knocked out of your center easily. easily. And also, because you're carrying this with you, you're getting more established into this quiet place. Then it affects the people around you because you carry it with you wherever you go. Now, I'm going to talk about something I've brushed on it in the past. I've talked about it. Um, I never really got into it uh, so much in details. Uh, but it's always been something that I have referred to. Now, the fifth dimensional consciousness, this ascension to fifth dimension, this emergence, to come to the 5D quantum awareness that a lot of people talk about. Uh, that is a top, a hot topic around the world. Uh, ascension to fifth dimension, to 5D quantum awareness. The, the roots of it is in the ancient Advaita Vedanta teaching. The, they both very well connected to each other. The 5D quantum awareness arriving in that consciousness is a consciousness of the oneness. Means that you're, you have transcended your individual consciousness into the collective consciousness. Now, these are all words and they're easy to say and easy to repeat because I've been there and I've done that. Then really living it and really understanding what, what it means. What does it mean? The problem that we have and well we can say it's a problem or we can say it's by design of the samsara. Samsara is the Sanskrit word for the world of illusion. This world that we're in, that it causes uh, a lot of suffering and we can see it, it's happening, is called in Sanskrit samsara. So on one hand, you may be asking, well, why does it have to be there? Why is this world is created and we have to come back into it and we have to develop a karmic relationship and then we just keep popping back into this and, and why we have to suffer and uh, the entire time we're in it 
uh, there's stuff we want we can get or when we get what we want then we lose it or when we get what we want then then we're not happy with it and we want something else one way to the tackle this and to recognize it is something that in most spiritual teachings uh, most literature and especially in pseudo uh, um, spirituality these days they never refer to it and they don't talk about it you have to dig deep and go to the ancient uh, scriptures and very deep teachings to get a hang of it or get an idea of what I'm going to talk about so what happens is that every single human being when they wake up in the morning they have the same thought the first thought for everybody it doesn't matter from which race religion uh, what country belief system that you have everybody has the same thought when they wake up in the morning and that thought is the I the I thought me a thought comes that I wake up and I say oh I'm tired or oh, I'm sleepy or oh um, I'm cold if you pay attention just uh, examine with yourself and pay attention when you wake up in the morning what is your first thought oh your first thought is either I or referring to you as I this me and this me this I thought that we are centering our life about it is simply a thought that arises in your mind as me moi separated from everything else because this I thought comes with this sense of separation there is a notion that you are not one with everything else it and from childhood from the time you were born I would say the first two years your consciousness is of the oneness but around two years two and a half years that's that's why they call it the terrible two is that that consciousness of the oneness begins to identify to its individual character and begins to in this emergence into identifying of its separation then everything becomes mine and theirs that's why when you see kids around age two that's they call it in in America they call it the terrible two is that is the identification happens to an individual and all of a sudden like Johnny has got the toy here and and uh, it goes like no it's mine this is mine and doesn't want to share it with his brother or his friend he doesn't want to have the toy but it doesn't want anybody else to take the toy so that's where this identity of separation starts to form and everything and everyone around you your family your friends the TV programs the songs everyone is fortifying this identification fortifying that this sense that you have that you are someone you're an individual and you're separated is correct is that's who you are that's what you are so you grow up with this false identity believing that this is your existence and your entire life you are trying to protect it and defend it 
And every time if you're, you're physically being threatened, uh, if it comes to a point of life and death, the mechanism really kicks in that you have to protect the body and survive. In addition to that, you have a sense, very strong sense, that uh, this is my life and I have to take care of myself. And if I don't take care of myself, nobody else will. And I need to worry about my future. I need to worry about my finances. Now, you may be very well off financially, but there's still this thing comes that what if um, I lose everything? What if what's going to happen to me? It's basically always comes to if I'm not careful, if I'm not taking care of myself, if I'm not taking care of my finances, if I'm not saving up for future, what's going to happen to me? And there's always this worry or anxiety about the world, that where is the world going? Uh, what's going to happen? And you can see it right now. It's happening very strongly that the world is in this weird place and it's never been like this before there's no script you can't follow the script now because we have nothing to compare it to and all of a sudden the entire world is shut down for whatever reason it's the virus the pandemic and we're not going to get into whether it's real or not or there's other forces behind it or not. That's a complete different story. The story, the, what, what is, is that we have come into this pivotal point in our history that most people, maybe in a very small uh, percentage of the very elite uh, on the very, very top, Maybe they know what's going on or where things going, but the rest of the world doesn't know anything. We don't know what's going to happen, where it's going to go. And that creates a lot of fear and anxiety for the mind, for this I thought, for this individual person, this individual person that has a sense of separation doesn't feel one with existence and now it's its existence is kind of threatened its future is threatened the programs that it used to be running are not working because we're used to getting into this routine of and believing or thinking that we know where everything is going or what's going to happen. So you get used to your routine and, and eventually you start thinking that maybe you know everything. You have figured out life, you know how world works, life works. And all of a sudden you have come to this situation like this and the mind is going crazy and it's in panic and anxiety because of what? what it, why are you worried and why are you in fear? What is it that really throws you off? I understand financial instability is a big part of it. Uh, not knowing if you're going to be alive, that's major. Uh, is society going to be the same? Is this going to change? All these things. But to whom do these problems appear? Who is it that is worried? Who is it that is afraid? And its existence is being threatened. To whom is this happening? When I ask you a question that, okay, tell me, John, 
what is going on? To whom is this happening? Who is worried? And your first question is, I. I am worried. I am worried of what's going to happen to me or me and my family. So you always come up, no matter what happens, with this word, I. You're referring to yourself, the I. So this I, this me that we're referring to is what is it? What is this me? What is this I? And here is where I'm referring to that barely anybody pointing out to it or challenging it. And a lot of us go through an entire life without ever questioning this or challenging it, ever. And in the pseudo-spirituality, uh, the new spirituality that we're learning and thousands of teachers are teaching it, in fact, the teachings are to fortify and make this I, this person, you, as an independent uh, entity, fortifying it and making you strong, making you believe that you have the power of manifestation, you have the power of creating things, you're part of the co-creation with God, and da -de 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 -de, And there's a lot of books and a lot of teachings that is going to teach you how you can create whatever you want. It means fortifying and making this I, this me, who is in complete separation from everything else, making it stronger. But you don't realize that in fortifying this identity of me, who is separated from everything else, because that's its experience, you know? My daily experience is to be separated from everything else. Therefore, I'm afraid of everything else, because everything else can can come and uh, threaten my existence. So now I'm working on this one to get it stronger so I can create what I want. So what happens is, is you're getting further away without knowing, keep getting further away from the actual thing you're trying to get to by identifying to a false identity. And you have no way of knowing it. Zero. So you go ahead doing it all of your life, and then you go, you, the body dies, and then the soul has to reincarnate and come back and do this thing again. And it keeps doing it and doing it and doing it. It keeps coming back over and over again, until maybe at one point in its evolution, something happens and something triggers it that it starts questioning its own existence. It's somehow its attention goes inwards and paying attention to who is this me, who is this I? And then, that becomes the, the, the very pivotal point of the transformation. And that creates this situation and at least opens up the door. It gives you a chance that you can liberate yourself from the cycle of suffering, from this cycle. Because the cycle, as you can see, it's got a lot of ups and downs. You're happy when you get what you want. When things go your way and everything fall into places, then you're happy and you're satisfied. But that is only happening part of the time. Some people, they're not very lucky. They don't have a great karma. Most of the life, things don't go their way and they're suffering. Uh, some people, 
let's say it's a 50-50 situation, 50% of the time things going their way, but the other 50% of the time things don't go your way. This me, this I thought, this individual, this sense of separation, this me, I, only is happy when it gets what it wants and things go its way. And the rest of the time it's in a state of up and down and up and down and up and down. Its happiness is directly depending on what happens in the other world? What happens in the outside world? Because the outside world directly influences its emotional state. Oh yeah, I got some, I got some good news that she wants to marry me. I'm very happy. I got some bad news that she decided not to marry me. Now I'm depressed. I got good news that um, all the pandemic is over and we're done with the virus, so I'm really happy. I got the good news, the bad news that the pandemic is getting worse and uh, it's getting very dangerous. Now I'm very sad. So all of its happiness and satisfaction is depending on what is going on in the other world, outside world, including when I say the outside world, I'm including what you're thinking, your thoughts and your emotions, including the body, your body. It's still in the outside. All of them are objects. Your thoughts, your emotions, and your body they're objects. Just like your computer is an object. Just like your phone. If you're having a phone, it's an object. That's what it is. Same thing. Your thoughts are objects. Your emotions are objects. They're objects because you can notice them, that they come and go. You're aware of them. You're aware of existence, their existence, as something that is keep changing all the time. So there must be objects. Otherwise, if you were your thinking mind, if you were your thoughts, then you would never know. You wouldn't be able to identify that you're thinking all the time because that would be your only reality from the time you were born to the time you die. Then your busy mind would not create any kind of issues for you because you would be one with it. The reason it's creating issues for you because you are somewhere away from it. You're able to see it from the outside. You're able to hear it. And you're not hearing it all the time because it's not consistent. There's gaps of silence in between your stream of thoughts. So that's why you're aware of thoughts happening because there's something separated. Something is away from it. That it sees it appears and it sees it disappears. So in this stream of thoughts, there is one big thought which is, says, I, me. You're referring to yourself. I don't like this. I like that. I feel good. I feel bad. I remember last week I met with my friend. I remember yesterday I went and had a hamburger. It wasn't that good. I liked it. I didn't like it. This I that you refer to as yourself, which is completely false, it's not even real, only can survive, only exists based on relating itself to something else. It has to connect itself to something else. 
And if you recognize that and you are really on it and you take this spiritual discipline, it requires getting on top of it. You can't just be dilly dally 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 dally. Ah, okay. No, you have to really tie up your belt and you say, you know what? I'm really going for it. So if you recognize it and you cut its connection to everything else that it wants to connect itself, it can't stand on its own and it has to fall back into its source where it came from. And when you're doing this exercise on a regular basis, you make that your practice, what happens is you're going to dis discover yourself going into long periods of silence, long periods of peace and quiet and balance and periods that you are completely blissed out or you are in some sort of a low dosage of bliss but you're very very happy but this is not ultimate happiness because it's not permanent you have to work on it on a regular basis in order to get there but it's the start which it takes millions of years to get to this point. So I'm going to explain this more to you so you understand it. The story that you have, we all have our past story. And most of us, again, what I'm talking about, this is not for average person. Okay, so uh, this is not even for a beginner on the spiritual path because they're not ready. This is advanced teachings, highly advanced. So the story of the I, the I thought, this I thought, this me has a story. And you can look back at your own life. And as you look back at your own life, see how much you're being haunted by your past, whatever past you have, whatever is your story. And if you also look around with other people, you can see how attached, how deeply they're invested into their story, whatever is the story. Yeah, you know what? We are Iranians and we come from Iran and we migrated here to the U.S. and we lost our country and but we are holding our traditions and yada 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 yada. Oh, we're Americans or we're Norwegian and and this is how we do things in Norway and this is how you can just see when you're talking to people how deeply they're identified to their nationality, to their traditions, to their religion, to their race, whatever is the story. And then how much you can see they're identified to their emotional stuff that has happened. And they carry this for a long time. Like, okay, I, when I was eight or 10 years old, I got abused, my mom was abusive, she was alcoholic, she used to burn my hand with a cigarette or she slapped me around, uh, my stepdaddy raped me or, or all these horror stories that I hear from my people I work with which are very valid and they did happen. I'm not saying the story is not real, it didn't happen or whatever emotional stuff that we have gone, all the traumas that we have gone through our lives. I'm not denying it that none of it happened. We all have our own share of the story. But what I'm saying is they all, this I thought, 
this thought that I am someone separated from everything is hanging on to all these memories and all these stories. So if at one point in your life, this is only as I said it before, I'm saying it again. This is not for everybody. Not all of you are going to do it. Not all of you are going to ex- admit it or, or resonate with what I'm saying. This is only for a few people who are ready. They're, they have gone through thousands of years of karmic experiences. Now they are ready to awaken. This is the last stage of their, their awakening. They're ready to go for it. So they're going to hear this. This is going to resonate with you. It's going to click. Other people, they're very attached to their story. And in this work, at one point, you have to let go of everything. You have to let go of everything that you, do, you know. Because none of them are going to do any good for you. When it comes to full realization on a spiritual path, you got to let go of all the ideas that you have. Whatever your ideas are about spirituality, you're going to have to let them go. You have to be a completely naked, like a newborn baby, and come to the stage saying, I don't know anything. I don't know anything. God, give it to me. I, I know nothing. So, what you want to do is pay attention to yourself. And when th- you, the idea of you comes, me, and you can say, you know, I like that tree. You see that tree? I like that tree. So, I'm going to use a simple example. All right, so who likes that tree? You ask yourself, and it says, I. I like that tree. So who is this I? Who is this me? So you question it. Who is this me who likes that tree? Who am I? Who is this me? So when I asked you who you are and who is this me, what do you answer? Somebody asks you, who are you? What do you answer? The common answer is, oh, I am Zarathustra. My name is Zarathustra. I'm a spiritual teacher or a healer or whatever. Or I'm a father or I'm, I'm a whatever. I'm a son. Uh, I'm a nurse. I'm a doctor. I'm a truck driver. Um, I'm American. I am da 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 da. You attaching, when I ask you who you are, you're coming with these things of defining who you are. But I'm not asking about your nationality. I'm not asking about your sex. I'm not asking if you're a father. I'm not asking you if you're an engineer. I'm asking you, who are you? It's a very direct experience. Question, who are you? And most people, if you take these other things away from them, they can't answer the question. They're like, uh, 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 uh. But you lived with yourself for 40, 50, 60 years. By now, you should know who you are. You've been living in this body all your life. But you can't answer a simple question. I asked you, who are you? I'm not asking you what's your name. I'm not asking you your nationality. I'm not asking what you do for work. And I'm not asking if you're a mom or your dad. I'm asking you, who are you? So all of a sudden, you can't answer it. You're stuck with it. So this I... Well, I am a person, blah, blah, blah. 
So now I'm forcing you to bring your attention inwards to take a look at this me, this I, this sense of I, me, individual, that you have had since your childhood, that you've never questioned, and now I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to question you for the first time in your life. Who is this I? Who is this me? Who are you? I want you to look into it. So when you look at it for the first time, this me, this I, and you're really being honest with yourself. You're not trying to fool yourself. Okay? This thought comes for you. This I. Now, you may not be able to right away give me an answer, but there is something else you can do. This me, this I, that says, I really like that tree. That's a beautiful tree. I like it. Okay? I want you to cut the connection between this I that you're referring to, this you, cut the connection with the tree that it likes. So if you cut that connection, then there is this me, this I, standing there, but now it's not relating itself to something. You cut its connection. I, I like that tree. Now you're cutting that, so it says I, I what? You know, Zarathustra, I ha you know, you start telling me your stories of your past. That, you know, this happened to you, that happened to you, you're, it's unfortunate, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cut the connection between this I and the past and examine the eye. Take a look at it and see what happens to it. You keep doing this with whatever comes up for you. Whatever. When you remember, whatever comes up for you, cut the connection between I, you, and whatever is the story. Let's say the story is that there is this pandemic happening in the world. The coronavirus thing. Okay? That what's going to happen? What's going to happen to our future? Where is the planet going? So the thought comes that what's going to happen with my finances, what's going to happen to me in a year from now on? So, again, it's about me. So, you cut the connection between me and the story of what's going to happen. Do it right now. Let's do an exercise. Whatever is your concern, what is, what is your concern, what's scaring you, what's bothering you the most, okay? Bring that story and see how your mind is playing it. It says, because it's 100% without a doubt connected to you. It's not about anything else. It's a concern you have. It's something you're worried about. Like your concern about Let's say, uh, what's going to happen to the forest? They're cutting all the trees. It's a concern you have that there's a me, there's an I thought, and a story. Cut that story. And then observe the I thought and see what happens. What happens when you do this uh, regularly and you're attentive to your practice, this I can't stand out, this me, this identity of you that you think you are a person. 
You are someone separated from everything else and everyone else. Therefore, you need to worry about your own well-being and your family and the world. Because you're obviously not feeling one with everything. So you have this sense of separation. So now you are for the first time examining and challenging this me, this I inside you who is concerned. Because it's never been on a spotlight. So as you start challenging it, what happens is that this sense of I as a person separated falls back into its source every time and your mind goes into silence. You dive into this complete, you can call it emptiness, but don't be afraid of the word emptiness or even if you experience that, that all of a sudden everything is very silent or it's very empty. There's nothing. You get absolutely quiet. And as you start to do this, which I will help you, because I'm initiating this for you, so I'm not going to leave you out here on your own, because you also need guidance with this, as I did. My teachers, my masters guided me. As you do this, what happens is the more you do it, the more you begin to, hold on a second, bring them on camera, I'm sorry, I don't understand, you're writing to me, bring him on camera, uh, Hilda, are you writing to me, bring him on camera, no, okay, good, okay, okay, so is there something wrong with the camera, can you see me, hello, yeah, we can see you, Everything oh, okay. is good. All right, because you sense you waved at me on Facebook, so I'm wondering. No, oh, no, no. No. Okay, good. So, all right. Um, where was I? What was I saying? <laughs> Can you tell me what I was saying? I forgot. Where was I? And anybody remember? As more we do it. Say that again. As more we do it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. As you begin to do this, the more you start to making this an, a, a practice, a daily practice, the more this sense of individual, this sense of me separated, because that's what it is. That's where your problem is. And this is where you're suffering. This is the root. I'm telling you directly. This is the root of your suffering. This is the root of every human being suffering. Is this false notion that you are separated from everything that you are an individual capable of making your own decisions. You are an individual having your own free will, separated from existence. That's where you suffer. That's the root of it. And then what, you, what happens is we're taking all these courses or, or these practices on fortifying this sense of separation, this me capable of manifesting things. I'm going to learn how I can magnify and attract what I want, manifesting. So I'm going to go take courses for that. So what I'm doing is I'm doing the opposite. I'm fortifying this false identity that suffers. So 
Maybe sometimes I get what I want, but the rest of the time I don't get what I want. So you never get to the root of the problem. You just keep suffering. That's what happens. There's always something. And when you think you got everything right, then something happens to your body. All of a sudden you're diagnosed with a weird tumor somewhere. There's always something. As long as there is an I, as long as there's a person that thinks it's separated from everything else because it's got its own thing going on, it's free, it's got its free will, it's someone, as long as that one exists, it's going to suffer. Something's going to get you. And as long as that person, that sense of separation, that you, you are someone capable of doing your own thing, no matter where you go, the I is going with you. So you can go to Himalaya and go sit in a cave and start meditating, but this sense of I that you're separated, which is in your mind, goes with you wherever you go. So it doesn't matter where you went and what kind of jumping jacks you got into, what kind of practice you do. You're cleansing, you're doing this, you're doing that, you're doing yoga. It doesn't matter. You have taken your mind with you. You have taken this I thought, which is the root of your, your suffering, with you wherever you go. And there's no freedom there. Try it and see it for yourself. Cut the connection with the I thought on regular basis with different things. And every time you do that, you experience pure silence. And the more you do this, you make a practice of it, the better you get at it. And the longer patches of time you recognize yourself that you're quiet. And as you do this, you naturally start to refuse taking any new information, especially when it comes to spirituality or uh, whatever information, n knowledge, because you recognize that these are food for the mind. You don't want to partake in it. Maybe you do for fun. Maybe you're reading something or watching a movie about the future of humanity, but you absolutely no, have no charge about it, zero charge. Because you're not interested in that. What you're interested is that you merge in with the truth of who you are. You want to be one with God. And you want to stay in that state. Means that you are not interested in what comes and goes. The more your mind goes to silence, the more you come to this place the more you begin to get a good taste and a glimpse of what is real, what remains the same and unchanging, versus what is changing all the time. A what is changing is not real, because you start to get a glimpse of what is real. And the more you get established into it, the more the world that you're looking at, perceiving and dealing with, loses its grip. It begins to lose its grip because right now it's got you here and it's kind of choking you to death because you find it very real. And this thing that you find very real 
is crumbling down. It's falling apart. So you're frightened. You're freaked out. Or what's going to happen to you? From something which is not real, but it's very real to you. So we can't say it's not real because it's choking you to death. But you have to examine its, its core. You have to get into the roots of it. Have anyone has any questions? Do you want to unmute yourself and ask me a question? Or you want to wave at me? Or write on the chat box? Let's see what we got here. Can, can you tell something more about Ziva? Can you tell something more about how your uh, experience is of the Dundas story? Yeah. Well, who, what's your name? Ziva Sandgren. I'm not, so, not in the unfortunately. I don't have a camera. Yeah. Hi, Ava. So what was your question? I didn't hear you. If, if you could tell something more about how it will be, I mean, what are you experiencing after your practices? How, how it will be what? What do you experience your life after you have done the practices? Which you are asking us to do. Okay, let me see if I understand your question correctly, okay? I'm going to repeat it. So what do I experience? How do I live my life, right? How do I experience my life? Yes. Right. So it's basically quiet. That's what it is. The, I witness the outside world chaotic and the inside world is quiet. And of course, every once in a while something arises because things don't always go my way and you just have to deal with it accordingly to what is. So if there is any kind of chaos appears, you deal with it, but then it doesn't continue. If something arises, and as it rises, you deal with whatever it is, but then it falls back and it becomes quiet again. It doesn't linger around to the next day and next day and next day. You deal with what you have to deal with in that moment, and then it's over. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, hey, can I ask a question? Sure, yeah, hi. Uh, hi, uh, earlier on you talked about uh, mantra and karma. Can you talk uh, more about that, please? Yeah, I was really, when we were meditating, I was saying that you are not, you don't need with this particular meditation, bringing yeah. your attention, when you bring your attention inwards towards the source of your thoughts, what is there before you think? Where do they come from? When you investigate it, then you come to this very quiet place. As you're shifting your attention in that direction. So then you don't need to use a mantra when you're meditating or bringing your attention on your breath or anything like that because your attention goes directly into the source of your thoughts, which is silence. So that's what I meant by that. Oh, okay, thank you. I'm not saying this is, everybody has to do it. I'm just suggesting it uh, because then your meditation becomes effortless. You don't have to put any effort into it. 
So, okay. all right. Then regarding your second question, karma, uh, can you be a little bit more specific on that? No, because uh, earlier on you mentioned karma and I didn't hear you properly. So I just wanted to, to ask you about your opinion in that because I heard you said karma. Right. Yeah. The... Um, It's been a, a thousands of years or millions of years cycle of the the mind has has somehow this I thought this mind rose out of nowhere. Of course, it's the divine's will because nothing happens without Ishwara, the Lord God has to want something to happen otherwise nothing will happen you can't even move your finger if it's not the will of that will of so, who i beg your pardon uh, will of who the will of the one that has created everything the will of god allah oh, okay okay it's the will of the oneness that things happen so in this there is this I thought, there is this notion of me, of someone who's got this mind, this thinking process which is happening. And this thing was, it arose, it was created, it just came. As it was created, it, it brings this notion, this feeling of separated, separation that I am born, I'm on this planet, I am someone, I'm a person, this is my identity, and I'm separated from everything else. This is not real, it's illusory. It appears to be that way, and it feels that way, but it's not real, because there has never been any kind of separation of anything from anything else. But in this world, in this appearance that it looks like it's separated, this person is going to come and go. It's going to recycle going through this process, this wheel of coming and going and coming and going. That's what I meant by the karmic wheel. Karmic, okay. the karma, right, exactly. So this keeps happening until at one point, it's rare, it doesn't happen for a lot of people. That's why you keep seeing what's going on. But at one point, who knows, through the grace, the grace of God, the grace of Guru, all of a sudden, the self-inquiry uh, notion, part of our existence kicks in means that at one point a mechanism awakened. Now you may have come and gone a million times, it doesn't matter, but we're just talking about this life right now here. Something has triggered inside you. Something has made you interested to come, for example, to this meeting or pulls you to go to India to find your guru or to find your spiritual teacher or to seek whether your spiritual teacher, your guru is within its inner guidance or you find it in the other world or you found a book or somehow you are, what happens is the mechanism is triggered, something has awakened and for the first time in our lives, our attention is starting to go inwards. Means we're questioning ourself. We're questioning the nature of our existence. And that's a pivotal point. And the question, the most important question that starts is that at one point you're saying, who am I? Who, who am I? I know they've said, they've told me 
I'm Zarathustra, or my name is John, or my name is Hilde, or whatever, and and I'm I'm a man, I'm a woman, I'm a student, I'm a doctor, I'm I'm a nurse, or whatever it is. I know these things. I know of these things, but but am I really this? Is this really who I am? So that's a very, very important place in your spiritual evolution. That when you start to question your identity, the identity that you think who you are is being questioned. And that's from there a very powerful journey starts to happen. Because now the force within yourself, the divinity, your div div the God within you is now pulling you inside. You're getting pulled and the journey within really starts. And it's not going to stop till you get to the answer. That's the beauty of it. I mean, on one hand, you're trying to get to it. On the other hand, from inside, it's really pulling you in. I have a question. Yeah, sure. What is your name? Hi, this is Sky. Sky, hi Sky. Nice nice having you back. It's so wonderful to hear you and thank you so much. Yeah. So I've had I mean, I've had some very interesting experiences and a lot of it uh originated from doing the ayahuasca ceremonies. But it's okay. it's brought up a lot of identity uh, questions and I just wanted to ask have you ever have you ever heard of or considered the possibility of, of having two souls that no I never thought about it so I mean as super succinctly during the first ayahuasca ceremony there was this other, uh, I had the sense of being a dragon. And okay. I took so much that I couldn't keep conscious control. Right. And so it just sucked me into infinite bliss. Okay. I mean, I was, bliss, I was blissed out of being conscious. Okay. And at, at the same time before I went into the bliss, I went into a, a perfect stillness meditation like samadhi. And that was just beyond words, you know, just everything yeah. perfectly still, perfectly quiet. Even though there was noise in the room, it was just like it was data to me. And, it, and I was in this perfect stillness. Anyway, so I went back for another ceremony to see if this dragon type entity would uh, reappear. And it came a lot stronger. I took less dose so I could stay conscious. And I had this sensation that that if I let if I surrendered myself to it, I wouldn't just go into the bliss that but that I wouldn't come back as uh, come, I wouldn't come back at all to this human body. Okay. So I had I had someone I loved there, grandma, my, my mother in law, and and I had her hold my hand and I held her hand and she helped remind me all the reasons to just stay in this world and, and be a support for them. And I did. And then now I just have all these different things that bring in some of that other entity. And it feels more like me than my human identity. So I'm, I don't know, I'm just pondering like that it could be potentially from a different era or a different cycle of creation. And it's coming to me now and, and it has some right. stuff to clean up. It has anger. Um, it, it does have Seem, seemingly access to infinite energy. Anyway, so I'm okay. just wondering what so, any thoughts you have. I would say to whom did, does this appear? To whom, well, to whom all so, these things coming? 
So that's the catch twenty two. When right. it does when it when it does appear strongly, it I stop feeling like a human and I start feeling like this entity and like that that's my true identity. So right. so when it appears, it feels like a uh, like I'm switching railroad tracks and I'm actually switching over to that one and that one feels much more uh, much more empowered, uh, much more infinite. Well, it feels infinite, and so it's very tempting to be like well i'll just shift from being a from being an effing mortal to being this infinite entity but then when i thought about family and everything else i said no i'm going to stay in this world there's reason to be here there's a reason i chose to be here and to be a human and that i need to continue my journey as a human okay so so when this thing ar ar arises again <clears throat> To whom did it arise? All these thoughts and these entities and these states. It, aro it arose to you, right? It arose to the to to the Skyler. Yeah, to the human sky. Okay, right. So now, if you, so in a very simple language, you can say, yeah, it rose to me. I experienced this. Correct? In Correct. a very simple language, right? So right. now if you, so now this I, this me, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to mute you because there's a lot of noise coming from behind. Now this, this I, I want you to cut the connection between you, this me, and whatever of these experiences you explain to me. Go ahead and cut that connection. Whatever has happened, I understand it's, it was very profound, powerful experience to go into this state of being the dragon, being the infinite. But something, it's an experience that arose. Is that right? It was an experience, correct? I I mean, it, I think let that. Let me ask you a question. Hold on. Uh, I think it's partially true. It could be an experience, but at the same time, I truly feel that I could shift over to that where the experience of being a human is no longer the experience. It's it's more like that that being a human was an experience, and that that is my true identity. Right. And then but, that, and then I, but then I would have to work on that identity and dissolving that identity into you know the oneness of all so right. then that sounds like a that sounds like an even harder challenge than working well, with this human human consciousness yeah all of this you know again um this is this is where it can get very dangerous and tricky my friend so let me give you my insight and what i've discovered especially with substance or using medicine to go to these worlds, which are wonderful that it expands your horizon and you begin to see things. And you go to this incredible places of completely being one with everything. But there's a but. You always come back. You always come back to who you are again. No matter how high you go, how expanded you get in these experiences, it's still an experience. It's not permanent. What I'm suggesting, which I am interested in, is that which never changes. I'm not interested in an experience. I've had many experiences. That did not liberate me. I'm only interested in liberation. And the liberation is not an experience. It's not something comes and goes. It's something which is permanent. So bring your attention in that direction. Go for the real deal. These other things, they're fantastic. They're great. They're expanding your consciousness. But they're not permanent. And it's very easy to get addicted to it. It's very easy to get distracted with it. But it doesn't take you home. You want to go home. 
where you want to come to this place which is still and silent and blissful and it's con continuous and it's not dependent on anything so I don't have to drink something to get to it it's always coming from its own light okay right I appreciate you bringing it up and exp and sharing it with me but and I've been there and I've gone there and I've gone through all of it but that's not freedom that's not where freedom is okay Anywhere? all right yeah yep yeah yeah thank you it's it's a taste of freedom but it also can become a crutch and it becomes a trap because there's still an I thought, there's still a person. I yeah. don't know if you were with us and this me, this I thought adds it up to, it gives itself another medal, it gives itself a pad, adds it up right. to the list of its experiences. So what it does, it fortifies the sense of I am someone separated and I had this experience and look at me and I had this experience as a oneness and I was one with everything but now I am back into separation and when my wife is angry at me or a dog is barking and the kids are screaming I'm back into the rut I'm well back actually actually I didn't say that I became one with the with everything. I actually said that I experienced infinite bliss, but it was lonely. And it did feel like it was an isolated, separate experience. And then this entity also was extremely selfish and felt that it was God and felt that every other person on this planet should be serving it. And so that's why I said cleaning up that, um, that right. soul or that right. entity would be, that's more, that's more work than cleaning up my human soul. Right. So I'm, I, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna have to stop you here. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, you already you already got it, my brother. It's 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 a great experience, but that's not freedom. Just just know that it's not liberation. I'm not saying don't do it anymore. Do it. I'm not saying it's good, it's bad. Uh, I don't have any judgment or stories about it. I'm just, we're only talking about one thing. We're talking about freedom. And that's not freedom. But thank you for sharing. I appreciate it, Sky. Anybody else? Anything else? We said we're going to go to uh, 11.45. So... We're unofficially doing the academy for an hour and 45 minutes. Anyone else wants to have a question or want to share? Yeah, hi. Uh, uh, my name is Ashish. Yeah, I hi. wanted to ask you about uh, this liberation. Like, how, how do you separate that I from all this uh, human suffering or, or like self? Right. Because all the suffering comes from, like, for example, like uh, when you suffer, you, you these emotions and, and you feel heavy in your heart on, and then it gets more worse. And, and, but how do you disconnect that I from that emotion? Okay, can you be more specific? Are you talking about yourself? Uh, can you give me a, uh, uh, a little I'm, bit more... Yeah, like, uh, I, 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 it, I'm talking about like myself when it comes to emotions and, and suddenly right. you feel from happiness yeah. to sadness and then you feel very heavy in your heart. I and, get it. And I relate to you because uh, I understand what you mean by that when you, when you, when you have this connection with I because as soon as you, you start thinking about where does it come from? So that's how like my question is about, I hope you understand it. Uh, I, let me see if I can answer you, if I got it or not. Okay, All so right. I, right. I'll, I'm gonna answer the first part of it. The first part of it is 
that these emotions rises for you, this whatever feelings that were relating to suffering. So the what you can do and uh, is simply by identifying when an emotion rises inside you. Again, we don't have a lot of time, so I can't really get into it, but uh, I'm just going to refer to it very quickly. When someone is aware of suffering, someone, some entity, some being, some awareness is here, is aware of an unwanted emotion rising. Okay, let's say you get sad or you get, you get uh, jealous or you're whatever, you know, you get depressed. So what you can do initially is to identify that something ari arisen in you, let's say depression, and simply telling yourself depression is here, depression is visiting me. The depression is present. And now you're not telling yourself you're depressed. You're saying depression is here. That means you are staying in your original place. Your original place is the witness, the observer, the one that is aware. That's your original state the observer of whatever comes and goes, the witness, the watcher. And then when you tell yourself that depression is visiting me, depression is here, you're not saying I'm depressed, you're simply aware of a presence of an object which is moving into your field. And then that object loses its power. Depression doesn't have any power if you don't identify with it and then it goes away. So that's how you can deal with unwanted emotions. Okay, uh, let's see, it's 11.45. If you wanna come to the next academy and we can get deeper into it. Uh, one announcement is we are currently working on the our online, uh, uh, free online global workshop, awakening workshop. Uh, I'm shooting for the dates of May 8 to May 12. So that's the date. If I can prepare everything and get, get all my literature together on my website, uh, then we're going to shoot for May, uh, I'm sorry, June 8 to June 12. And it's going to be five days for two, two hours a day. This is the plan. I'm hoping I can pull everything together in the next two, three days. If I can do it, and that's going to be the date. If not, then I'm going to push it the following week. So just wanted to put it out. So hopefully in two weeks, we're going to have a free online global awakening workshop for five consecutive days. During that time, Academy will not be, uh, uh, we won't do the Academy, but every day it's going to be from 10 in the morning, uh, California time, till 12 o'clock noon for five days in a row. If you have any suggestions for me, uh, you're welcome to write to us. Uh, my email is info at zaratustra.tv. So we're open to that. Uh, you're welcome to visit my website. My website is zaratustra.tv. We have some new products under the product section. Uh, if you want to browse through and go check it out, you're welcome to. Otherwise, you can contact us on our Facebook pages. I thank you for being here. I appreciate your presence. Uh, my recommended practice to you for this week is that sever the connection between the I thought and whatever that it gets engaged with and observe yourself and see what happens. Or we can talk about it next week. Oh, one other thing. Uh, Amir keeps telling me to bring this up and I keep forgetting. 
Three months ago, I decided for the first time to create a program called Life Training Program. It's a private mentorship. It's a VIP program, a private mentorship. It's a one-on-one -on -one, uh, program that I work with you. Uh, originally, it was going to be 12 sessions, and you would have access to come to one of my retreats. Since we're not doing anything, uh, not traveling anywhere, and all the travels are banned, I have extended the life training program from 12 sessions to 16 sessions. So it's going to be a four-month program. It's a tailor-made program for your specific needs to help you reach awakening or anything that you are really dealing with, whatever issue you have. So I would be meeting with you once, once a week for an hour and a half. And I basically go throughout your whole life, and then I come up with a solution how to tackle that. If you're interested... Uh, you can contact me, write to me at uh, info at zaratustra.tv. I'll set up a 15-minute, 20-minute consultation with you, and we'll go through it, and I'll give you all the information you need. Thank you for your presence. I appreciate being with me here. I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. We're doing the Academy next following Wednesday. Um, regarding the, uh, the global uh, workshop, just stay in tune. We, if you have contacted me, if you're here through Zoom, then we have your email and we're going to email you. Otherwise, you need to check my Facebook pages or go on my website to see of the dates and the time and all the information that you need to get. Look, this is an opportunity, a golden opportunity. I know it looks scary. It's confusing and all kinds of things are happening. Uh, we're all into this together. Okay, I don't know of anyone who can skip the planet and go somewhere else into hiding. Even if you go into the hiding, still it's on planet Earth. You're still going to have to drink the same water, breathe the same air, and eat the same food that is produced by planet Earth. So we're in it together. Now, as long as you stay in your own center, your attention comes back to this place where you experience the divine love and you feel that you have God in you. And you genuinely come to this place and you experience it. And those who've been with me long enough, we've done that many times. We have practiced on recognizing the presence of Her Majesty, which is here. And you tap into this place and you feel God, the presence. Then you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Because once you come here, your mind quiets down and the presence, Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, reveals itself and you automatically into this very powerful force field no harm nothing can come to you nothing can touch you when you have God inside you when you recognize the presence inside you fear worry and anxiety have no place they can penetrate into the force field Stay in this place. Trust that that which created the world, the creator, is the same one who's responsible for the creation. And you are a part of that creation. The same one who has brought you into this world and has fed you and has helped you to come to this point in your life is the same one who's responsible 
to carry you along. Stay in this place. Come to this understanding. And then you will see that your mind quiets down and all fear and worry will disappear and life becomes very smoothly. Things will fall into places for you very easily. And stay in that place. You're going to be fine. Everything's going to be okay. And there's nothing to worry about for the spiritual warrior. Because the spiritual warrior carries, carries God inside. And that's your power. Love you very much. Nice to see you. And I'll see you next week. Namaste.